gentlemen, thrill six of all ages. I am the CHALL, Doncaster Board Football for Theme Parks, and we have arrived at the day here at Flamingoland Resort Yorkshire in Bolton. Now, obviously, I've not been here for a good few years now, and the big attraction for this trip today is, of course, this sick, the brand new 10 Libby roller coaster manufactured by Intamin, opened just yesterday on the launch day. Obviously, couldn't be the launch day yesterday, however. Uh, it's great to be here this weekend to try it out on the opening weekend. Now, of course, I've been covering this ride for the last two, three years on the channel. Right from down from the first rumour to the first hearings and the markings about this ride, the removal of the former rides, the construction of the coaster. We've covered this coaster from every single angle. And now I'm finally here for my first ride on the new roller coaster. So we're going to get straight in the queue line. The park is actually open about half an hour before it's actually scheduled to open, which is very, very cool. So fingers crossed getting this ride as soon as possible. Give you guys some queue line footage. Check out the rest of the rides of the park today as well. Many other chains around the park as well, all the potential sites for development and all that good stuff and review all the rides and attractions around the park. So let's get straight into our first ride on SICK and let's see what this ride is like. Come on. The brand new 10 looping roller coaster here from England. After three years, three years of covering this project from the first rumour to the market to the construction to today, the opening weekend. I can honestly say that's a wonderful ride experience. Shout out to everyone at Flamingoland for that ride experience. Because first of all, let's talk about the station. The station was a good combination and a collage of colours. You've got the a good contrast from the black and greys and white of the Britain flag on the wall to the tie-dye at the top with the SICK logo uh, measured inside of the tie-dye uh, colour scheme. Uh, so I thought that kind of bunting was a nice collage from the, from the black and grey of the Britain flag in the station. The ride experience itself was amazingly done. It definitely felt quite like a Colossus type layout. The only thing I'll say, I think it's just because it's me, I've got massive calves and bulky legs, is because during the inline twist, the lap bars were quite uh, painful a little bit. No, not too much, but like a little bit painful on the legs. So just a little thing there, but I think that's just because it's me. Um, I think for other riders, it won't be painful on those inline twists when it's when the lap bar's pressing against the leg. But apart from that, like I said, the rest of the ride, the inline, the inline twist was still good anyway. So uh, overall, for me, I think that you know, the ride experience as a whole was pretty good. I think it all blended together really well. I wasn't too sure on the partnership at first. I didn't think a fashion brand on a theme park coaster was going to work, but I think they've definitely pulled it off in a very cool way. I think they've pulled it off in a very niche way. Uh, I think the the stylization of the brand and the, the imagery of the, of the brand and how it's placed around the ride and how they use it around the experience is uh, very good indeed. The way they use it is very, very good. So overall for me, SICK is a fantastic ride experience. I definitely recommend it to anyone out there who hasn't come to Flamingoland yet. Out of 10, I'll give it a good eight and a half. I know we usually go for halves, but I can't really decide between an eight or a nine. So eight, I say eight and a half out of 10 for SICK. Well, that was a brilliant ride experience. Let's go and try the rest of the ride here from England, but sick. Well done to England. That was sick. Pardon the pun. So the next ride we're going to be trying here today is called Hero. Now this is manufactured by a company called Zamperla. It's known as a Volair. Now what a Volair is, it's Zamperla's version of the flying roller coaster where you're tilted into the flying position and you're going around the track like you're flying like a bird. Now this opened back in 2013 along with two other attractions, the Twistosaurus and the Cyclosaurus down the prehistoric area of the park. Now this ride when I last did it was extremely painful, but I'm willing to hold off opinions because it has been five, six years since I've done this last. So hopefully it's improved its smoothness. If it has, then I'll give it the same review as I gave it last time. So let's try out Hero and let's see if it's changed from five years ago. Pearl of Olaf flying coaster. 
I'll tell you what, from last time, it's less painful than it was last time. I think they've definitely built something to the right. I don't know what, but they've definitely improved something, whether it's the restraint, whether it's the actual system, trap reprofiling. I don't know what they've done, but something about that ride was less painful than last time, which is always good news. Uh, I still felt quite a bit of the shoulders here and there during some of the tight turns as well. And the inversions, there wasn't a lot keeping you in during the inversions, which is always good for free airtime sensations, but uh, not so good for safety. So uh, the padding itself, the grid at the back was a little bit iffy, but apart from that, like I said, it's better than it was last time, and I think they've definitely done something good to the ride. So uh, Hero is better than it was, which is good. Hopefully keeps improving its operations. Let's move into our next attraction, which I don't know what's going to, what's going to be yet, but we'll deliver you the next attraction as we get it. Let's go. So we are about to ride Kamali, the Vakoma suspended looping coaster at the park that opened around 15 years ago, just over 15 years ago. Now of course this is a specific type of model because it has the zero G roll just there. And uh, this is a, a fantastic ride, I've done it plenty of times, it's in my opinion the best suspended looping coaster in the country uh, in front of a view. So obviously still yet to do uh, the ones in Europe and the different parks around uh, Germany and France and all those different SLCs around Europe. So for the UK at least it's definitely better than Infusion. I still yet to do the one at Fantasy Island so hopefully fingers crossed get that in at some point in the next couple of years. But um, overall, you know, Kamal is a wonderful ride and uh, hopefully fingers crossed it'll provide a great experience. So, let's Let's get on the beast and let's see how it rides today. Suspended looping coaster here from England Resort, Yorkshire. Very good ride. Uh, I think it's definitely improved its ride experience. I think that the uh, inversions gave a good sensation of experience. I think the G's on that was pretty good. Uh, I think the uh, one thing I've always liked about Kamal is the theming and the paint jobs of the, the track and support. I like the whole African support you can see behind me. And um, yeah, overall, it's a very beautifully themed ride. I think that overall, it's going to be a wonderful experience for many generations to come. Now, one big thing, of course, is as you see it going past, one of the big things there, you can see it where one, one element of it is the inversions. The sensation and the free air time that you get off the inversions, especially when you're going upside down towards the crest and the halfway point of the inversions, is definitely spot on. You feel a good sense of air time from it as it goes around the track. So overall, like I said, wonderful experience, great amount of air time, good flow of G-force, and overall it's a fantastic ride experience. So let's get on to our next ride here at Flamingo Land Resort. So we are here at Mumbo Jumbo. This is the SNS El Loco roller coaster that first opened at the park in 2008. Now Mumbo Jumbo has a very unique element, very unique inversions. It's got the Beyond Vertical Drop, which took the world record for the steepest drop on any roller coaster in the world. Now obviously there's been many roller coasters with steeper drops and steep drops that have taken the or close to taking the record in the past. Coast that took the record as well from the world, such as Takabisha over in Japan. That's taken the world record for the steepest drop uh, from Mumbo Jumbo. That's, this took the record from Saw the Ride at Thorpe Park back in 2009. So, uh, obviously, you know, this is definitely a one of a kind ride, a record breaker of a coaster. Now, obviously, like I said, it's a very compact footprint, very unique elements. SNS has done a great job over the years, you know, manufacturing this and keeping this maintained. Overall, the theming itself is fantastic as well. The African theming and the up kind of queue line and the sort of African post, the fencing, just to give that rustic African village theming. So we're going to head inside Mumbo Jumbo and see what the ride is actually like. Let's see if it's improved from a few years ago. Jumbo, the SNS El Loco roller coaster. Now, again, I think the shoulder uh, sort of harnesses at the top kind of give me a little bit of pain on the shoulders, but apart from that, 
very cool, tight turns, beyond vertical drop, gave you a really good sensation of airtime, and overall just a fantastic ride experience. Now the reason why we're standing here is because this is the old cable car station. Now of course the cable car, as you can see, there's no cable car actually, you know, there's no line in that. Uh, now the reason why we're here is also to talk about future development. Now we just rode uh, SIG, which was the first ride of the day, and it got me thinking, you know, we're going to spot in areas of the park that could be used for future attractions or future development. And that's why we're here at the cable car station, at the old cable car station around Kamali and Mumbo Jumbo. Now, the reason why I'm here and the reason why I'm doing this here is because I think this could be the prime location for a brand new compact thrill ride or a family ride of some kind. You could be talking things like a San Pearl and Nebula's attraction, which has just opened up like the one that's stepping in Drayton Manor in the new Vikings area. Um, you could also go for like a family ride, like maybe like a Gojetters Rooms to Zoom ride in the CBB's land at Alton Towers, that kind of sort of child friendly sort of swinging turning ride uh, a bit like Dumbo flying elephants as well at Disneyland Paris so, so maybe something like that could do in this beautiful location just behind me you can give it a nice African name nice African theming and really really combats the whole area so I think a nice little family ride or a compact thrill ride could be a very good idea for the park now another way that could go is the Zampola Hawk attraction if you don't know what those is look at things like Lumberjack at Canada's Wonderland it's that kind of new gen submission if you like at Alton Towers where it's not really doing the zigzaggy turns 360 degrees it's sort of just doing a full 360 degree loop kind of like Pandemonium which Drayton Manor used to be but the Zamperla Hawk version rather than the, the Fabry version now obviously there's, there's plenty more uh, time to discuss all of this we'll be taking more footage of the cable cars station just to get a bit more of an idea on it and uh, we'll have more of a discussion in the future on the channel about future developments at Flamingoland post uh, the sick opening. But uh, I thought I'd just point that out today just to, to give you an idea for future development. We're going to take a look around the rest of the park as well. Any ideas about future development, we'll give you some site locations and some possibilities around the park for a separate video as well. But uh, overall, like I said, this could be a good area for future development for a brand new ride. So let's go to our next attraction. We don't know what that's going to be yet, but hopefully we'll find out as we get there. So this right here is the Lost River Ride. This opened back in 2004 by Bear GmbH, or Bear Ride. Now this is the flume ride here at the park. It dives deep into the line enclosure, ending with that big massive drop right there. So let's get straight into the Lost River Ride and let's hopefully, fingers crossed, not get too wet on this ride. I just caught the Lost River right. uh, As you can see, we're going to drop back. Look at that splash. Uh, now, this ride is an absolute soaker. It's like the... <laughs> Trying to be careful because to get the after effect. It's very close to Tidal Wave in terms of the splash effect. If you've been, you've been on Tidal Wave at Thought Park Resort, you'll know the splash effect. Way! <laughs> Um, overall, I think the the whole ride experience is very, very good. I think a bit more theming here and there on the slow part, sort of towards the drop. I think that would be my only sort of feedback from it. I think just add a bit more theming, create a bit of a story around it, a bit more of a, a storied atmosphere around the ride. And it'd have a good attraction. But overall, I think it's all right already. I think, like I said, the drop was fantastic. The the slow movement around the exhibits was good. And that's the uniqueness of the ride. I like how it um, sort of interacts with the exhibits and then gets you ready for that ride element, that, that lift hill, the turn in the shed, hashtag what's in the shed, and the massive drop. Like I said, tidal wave feeling, I thought, part with that big, big drop. So overall, like I said, Lost River Ride, very, very good. First time doing it, and I love the ride itself. So let's go to our next ride here at Flamingo and Resort. What a soaker.
So we're here at the penguin enclosure in the zoo, and we've got Humboldt penguins here. That's just one species of penguin. Overall, in terms of penguins, we've got 18 different species sharing similar characteristics. They're all flightless, however, they can fly underwater because they're so streamlined, and also they've got a thick layer of feathers, which is a very interesting fact here about the penguins. A very Arctic feel, a little bit, like an African Arctic feel uh, to this particular enclosure. So, uh, these are the penguins, lovely animals as usual, and uh, a great exhibition here at the Flamingoland Zoo. Big pool, high sun rush. 
In other words, what's heading in your way? They said, someone said, yay, very enthusiastic in there. So, uh, those of you on the second row, you could also get wet because there's no human shields in front of you. Those of you on the second row over there, you've got a human shield, so you might be all right. So, there's your warning. If no one wants to get wet, now it's your small chance to move. If you only get wet, you can stay where you are. So, I need another countdown. Are you ready, guys? From three to one, and a cheer if he hits it. Let's go, guys. Three, two, one. Off you go, Marvin. Can you do it? been here for around 10 years now. Dynastone Park sorted happened just after the pterodactyl got put in. So this is your prehistoric themed section of the park. Got the main shop. Got Twistosaurus here which is the Zamperla Junior Twister roller coaster. It's got a queue of around two three minutes so uh, not too bad a few minutes at best so see what that's like got some other attractions around here as well this is the zampola magic bike it's known as the cycle sword Now this is manufactured by Vacoma, a European coaster manufacturer and attraction manufacturer. There is another version of these motorbike roller coasters, the most famous one in Europe being Booster Bike at Tomaland. Now this one opened uh, quite some time ago, one of the first major permanent roller coasters of the current Lingoland that opened here at the resort. Now obviously it's my first time trying it today, it was a good five years ago, let's see if it's improved since then. Let's go for the ride of our life. behind me, Velocity, the motorbike coaster. I tell you what, very, very fast, a little bit shaky at times, but I can expect that from an older roller coaster. Very good ride indeed. Now the force that you get on it, especially on the launch, as you can see behind me just then, the launch itself creates a maximum amount of forces, and it creates a really good sense of airtime as you're going over the airtime hills. So overall, a very good ride experience. Now let's end our day with a few flat rides, and another go on sick, the brand new ride for this year. Overall, been a fantastic trip.
comes to the end of our day here at the Flamingo Land Resort. Loads of fantastic rides and attractions. The brand new ride is amazing. Or to give it its proper branded title as we do here on the channel, it was Fan Dabby Dozy. Now, obviously, that is not the only content for Flamingo Land today. We've got the Mischief Mansion POV in full. We've got Q-Line walkthroughs. We've got other off-ride content. It is all going down. It's going to be all good, all fantastic content. We do want to stay tuned for that, then please do like if you've loved it, comment down below your thoughts on Flamingo Land and this trip. Subscribe if you are new around here, click the notification bell to never YouTube video. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers and 1 million views, which is unbelievable, so let's get there by the end of this year. And for now guys, I am the CHALL, don't press the ball, but don't the theme parks, keep them the coastline, and I'll see you guys in the next vlog very, very soon. Take care guys, have a Flamingo-tastic day. Let the music